Hi, everyone. So the slides can be found at this bit.ly URL if people are interested in following along. Um, so I'm going to tell you what a bug can teach you about Python. Um, so you can tweet me at Bradical. I'm also a Reeker Center alum. The Reeker Center is a place where you can go if you want to learn and grow as a programmer. We have a Reeker Center alum here as well today. Um, I'm a software engineer at, Pi at Peloton. It's a great company to work. If you're interested in working with me, please let me know. So this is something that I was building when I encountered the bug. Actually, last night I decided to try this out for myself, and I went to the URL up there, and I reserved to try a demo, and this morning I went to try it, and it's awesome. Um, so this was the system that had a bug in it. And so everything was going fine. I hadn't made any code changes, and I got this Slack message from someone that was trying to add a front-end feature. And they said, hey, I booked some appointments, but, they, but the time slots, it was returning an empty array. So I got this, and I was really puzzled because there had not been any code changes. And this is a piece of the, back of the buggy code. So it's a bigger piece of um, an endpoint that um, returns appointments. And the bug itself is in this yellow area. This is statement was the cause of the bug. And the values were the same. So I assume that the is statement would work and that it would equate to true. But the if clause equated to false. And now I'm going to give you some background into how comparisons work in Python. We have the is keyword that compares references, and the double equals symbols compares by value. One thing that if you know me, you'll, you'll know that I love dogs. So in my next slide, um, to kind of show the difference between comparing by value versus com comparing by reference, I have Paul and I, we both have a dollar. If we compare a dollar by value, which is using double equals, we have the same dollar, so it equates, equates to true because it's one. We both have the value of both of our dollars is one. If we compare it by reference, we also get the same value because we both have the same dollar. However, in this example, if we compare by value using the double equals, we get one. But if we compare by reference, we don't get. Um, we have different values, so it's not the same. So to understand why this bug occurred only with bigger numbers, I'm going to start to talk about how the Python interpreter works and how um, memory is managed in Python. Here we have the Python interpreter. We have a call stack. Um, each frame is representing a function. And every variable that we have points to an object on the private heap. The private heap is another way of saying a big memory store, or a big array, or a big list. And everything exists there. Like Everything that's an object in Python exists in the heap. So now I'm going to show you what the pi objects are that are on the heap. So this is an example of one, a pi long object. Every Python object has this big head. And so everything, so for example, an integer, we have to create a Python object and we put the integer in that value. So it can be a little bit, um, I guess, cumbersome for the memory manager to create new objects. So one thing that Python does to optimize is we have every C Python program has a small ins array, array that help, helps us optimize. So all of these objects are already on the heap. So when we're in instantiating a variable that's between negative 5 and 256, we don't have to allocate new memory. We don't have to create that new pi object or put it on the heap because it's already there for us. We just refer to it. And to prove that to you, I'm going to show you an example of instantiating, instantiating a value of negative 5. So what happens is we're, I'm going to show also it's going to be an example of comparison by reference and comparison by value, or by reference. Um, a comparison using the is keyword. Now I'm going to show you some of the source code that's used in this initialization, so some of the C code. In this piece of code, um, when we're getting this object, we first look to see if it's in the small ins array. And then we return that object. So for numbers that are between negative 5 and 256, we get the object. We don't have to create it. It's already there. So if we, add, if we create another value, another variable called w, um, they both have the same value, and they both have the same reference. So if we do v 
And now we're going to try comparing the objects by reference. So this, we're using the is keyword, but this is the C source code. And coincidentally, the C source code uses double equals to compare, because it's comparing the addresses. So a reference is like a post-it note to a location or like an address. And so here we're looking at both the addresses and we're like, are these the same? They're the same object, so it would equate to true in this case. At a higher level, comparing objects is like comparing the location of the objects on the heap, if you're comparing by reference. So this statement equates to true because we're comparing by re reference and V equals W, or V is W, turns out to true because we're both, we're pointing to the same object on the heap. Next, we're going to look at 257 because 257 is not in that small ins array range. When Python initializes these variables, it creates two new pylong objects and puts them on the heap for us. And so when we compare X and Y, they're different, and so we get false. Great, so back to our bug. Paul booked two appointments, but they, won't, they weren't showing up in the endpoint. Um, what my code was doing was I was going through all of the appointments and chunking them by time slot. And so I was using this if condition, this is condition. So the way my code was written first was I was comparing the time slot underscore ID to the time slot dot ID. And the appointment time slot underscore ID had a different pylong object on the heap than the time slot dot ID did. So we're comparing two different pylong objects on the heap, two different references. Of course, is would equate to false. Um, only went with numbers that are greater than 256. So this is a really bad fix. This is the fix that worked, but um, it helped me unblock someone on like a Saturday because I like didn't want to have this person blocked. I just changed the underscore to a dot and it worked and it was awesome. And I didn't really know why it worked, but it worked. Um, <laughs> but afterwards, I looked a little bit more and was trying to figure out why it worked. So that's what I want to share with you. So this is the fix after it worked. By changing the underscore to a dot, instead of looking at that time slot underscore ID, we're looking at the same time slot, this same pylong object twice. The fix worked because I used attribute accessing notation to access the time slot, because the appointment object had a reference to the time slot object. You can see with that green arrow. So back to our dog money example, where Paul and I were sharing our money. Similarly, the a dot slime time slot and the ts, in this case, point to the same object on the heap. So an even better fix would have been to use double equals, and rainbow equality signs are always wonderful, as, as well as holding hands. So this could have all been avoided by using a double equals sign. So in essence, looking at the contents of the pylong object instead of the object itself. So next I'll show um, an even better fix, which would have been, yeah, this using double equals. And later on, I ended up refactoring my code to use double equals instead of is. And this, show ch this code changes, shows switching to comparison by value. Some takeaways from this presentation. So you hopefully know the value of using double equals when you're comparing values. Um, and hopefully you've gained some insight into pi objects and how they exist on the private heap. Uh, if you're still more curious about other bugs, you can Google search for love your bugs PyCon, and you'll find a cool video by Allison Capture. Um, another thing that I hope you take away is just to be careful when using is in Python, because you're comp it ref refers to objects on the heap as opposed to their actual values. Um, it's also good not to just fix bugs and be like, my code works, but it can be a lot of fun to try to understand why your fix worked. It can be a great educational experience. I think that's about it. So I want to thank people that came here. This was my first talk at a Python conference or any tech conference for that matter. So if you could go to this link and provide e any feedback, I'd be very grateful of that. Um, some really awesome people helped me with this presentation, which I'm also super grateful for. 
tweet me on Twitter, and these links are some resources that you might be interested in. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes for questions, so if you have questions, please raise, raise your hand and I will give a microphone to you. Hi. Um, so why did you decide to use is in the first place for that case? Like, it, it seems like you're comparing IDs, though it's not like objects and... Yeah. Oh, I don't really have a good, question, good answer to that question. Um, I think maybe from a naive perspective, if you're comparing two objects, I guess I didn't know the difference between comparing by reference versus comparing by value. Um, and I kind of, well, not just that, but I assumed that th there, I didn't know that there existed pi objects. I thought it was just integers somewhere that I was comparing. Yeah. Uh, we we'll have time for one more question. Okay, no more questions, so I guess we're done. Thank you. One more question. Oh. The long integer, like what, what makes Python create a new object instead of using reusing the object that is already created for like an integer? Um, so the question was like, why does Python create a new object? Yeah. Um, when it's outside of that small int range. I so it has to be like a long integer? Uh, so like in Python, um, I guess from Python 2 to Python 3, we got rid of the pi int object, so we're only using the pi long object. But I guess you're asking why do they create a new pylong object for every integer that's not in the range of small int? Is that your question? Um, yeah, I just don't understand like, why Python is creating a new object instead of like, using objects inside the array. And is it because of it's a, it's a, like, a, you make a procedure to create inside that array? Um, I guess the reason why Python's creating a new object is because the way that Python stores integers is it, or it stores everything inside of this pi object. So whatever, it, it can't just keep the number, it has to keep it inside of this object. Um, and I guess an, an alternative would be to go look at all, all the existing pi objects that are already on the heap and see if that exists and just point to that. But that probably wouldn't be the most efficient thing to do because you want to just create an integer in constant time. Does that answer your question? Sort of. Sort of? Okay, you can ask me after too. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're out of time. So if you have more questions, you can talk to the speaker in the hallway. Yay.